Hi, I'm Maggie Matheson. I'm a public health nurse. I'm here today at the University of Minnesota where I will be speaking with Dr. Kathy Jordan. I'll be talking with her about the Children and Nature Network and helping children to engage with nature to promote their health. So I'm Kathy Jordan and I am a pediatric neuropsychologist by training, um, which means that uh, I spent the early part of my career um, working with children with neurodevelopmental disorders, um, neurological disease, insults to the brain, um, and I also specialized in lead poisoning, so I had an environmental health emphasis. Um, I'm a faculty member at the University of Minnesota in the Department of Pediatrics and in the Extension Center for Community Vitality. Uh, but the most fun part of my job is I am the Consulting Research Director for the Children and Nature Network, or CNNN, which is kind of hard to say. <laughs> um, and um, what I do in that role is I, I developed and I now oversee our research library, which is a searchable repository of, at this point, over 800 peer-reviewed scientific studies. We've summarized them in lay accessible language um, and we also put out a monthly research digest sending that to 25,000 people by email summarizing kind of high level findings from hot off the press research uh, published in the last month and then sometimes like a special issue a topic a theme um, and we'd pair that with a webinar a national webinar for um, about 400 or so folks um, you know focused on that same topic um, and I also basically try to make sure that Children and Nature Network's work is, you know, undergirded by the evidence and that our um, directors and staff who are working on everything from family engagement to green schoolyards to cities um, have, an a have access to the research and I can help them sort of digest that and use that in that work. So it's both a an externally facing role and an internally facing role in terms of trying to get everybody to do things in an evidence-based sort of way. So Children in Nature Network, um, you know, its mission statement is really about working for equitable access to nature for the benefit of both children and the planet. And I want to kind of break that down or parse that a little bit. So the equitable access part is really important. Children and Nature Network has spent the last year or two really diving deep into relevance, diversity, equity, inclusion, um, and trying to look at themselves um, and also trying to think about how to move the movement around children and nature forward in terms of paying attention to equity, paying attention to diversity, you know, why why do many fewer you know, families of color enjoy the outdoors in the way that um, Caucasian families do, for example? Um, so the equitable access is really important. And then the part about children and the planet health is important. It really recognizes that these are two interdependent things, um, that a healthy planet supports children's health and development, but that children who are um, connected to quality nature experiences fall in love with that nature and are much more likely then to do something to protect the planet. So it's this kind of mutually you know, reinforcing or symbiotic sort of thing. So um, that those words were chosen very carefully. Um, Children and Nature Network is a backbone organization, meaning that um, we're, we're not service delivery on the ground working with youth directly, but we're supporting those who do that work um, f with youth and, and for youth, whether they be grassroots leaders um, out in, you know, cities and, and states around the country or policy makers. Um, we're there basically to, you know, try to provide them with evidence to help scale models that work, um, you know, to, to support grassroots, grassroots leadership, um, basically whatever we can do to help the professionals um, that are working with children, you know, do a great job of connecting them to, to nature and working with policy makers and city officials, helping them you know, work with their cities, how it's designed, how it runs, so that the programs and the spaces, you know, best serve the, the nature needs um, of children and families. So. Wow. Yeah, it sounds like you have, um, you know, there's a lot of work being done on a lot of levels mm -hmm. in, in, in several arenas. Yeah, it's definitely. That's fascinating. Um, do you have any examples you might be able to share of um, health promoting effects of children having regular contact with nature or the natural environment? Sure. You know, at Children and Nature Network, we like to say that 
Nature makes children healthier, happier, and smarter. And those three big buckets really capture the main areas of the research in terms of nature's impact on children. So, so healthier, um, if we think about um, physical health, like physical activity and physical fitness and weight management and you know eventually things like blood pressure control and, and things like that. Um, it also includes things like myopia. Um, so there's kind of an epidemic, I don't know if you are aware of this, but there's kind of an epidemic of nearsightedness um, in our country, but um, in other parts of the world, particularly in Asian countries, it's really, really a problem. And they have figured out that one of the reasons why that is happening is decreased exposure to sunlight, because sunlight in early Early childhood uh, helps develop the shape of the eye and it's about dopamine receptors but if those don't um, sort of function normally you get an abnormally shaped eyeball and that leads to, um, to nearsightedness. Um, also vitamin D deficiency you know spending time an appropriate amount of time out in the sunlight is actually good for you um, making sure you're not doing it too much so that you're not increasing your skin cancer risk, but, but some is good for, for vitamin D. So the physical health piece is one part of that, healthier. The mental health and emotional function piece is um, more that sort of happier part. Um, so it's about um, everything from improving um, positive emotionality and decreasing a negative, you know, negative emotional tone to, um, depression and anxiety symptom reduction to learning social emotional skills through nature which is one of the um, most common outcomes actually is when you're when you're participating in nature activities particularly with groups and you're encountering you know the challenges that nature provides as well as the sort of social challenges that doing it in a group um, provides you're you're building communication skills and collaboration skills and conflict management skills and resilience and and that sort of thing so those social emotional skills are really important um, and one of the major findings is and one of the major theories has to do with stress reduction and so that's you know a primary one about the happier part and then the smarter piece is about um, cognitive development um, and, and learning and educational outcomes. So we know that um, nature exposure improves our attention and our cognitive function. We're better able to kind of control our impulses and manage our behavior and stay on task. Um, children who are learning in a nature context are um, achieving more in terms of knowledge gain about whatever that subject is. It doesn't have to be about the environment. Um, it could be about math or you know, something about literature or um, you know, something about geography, but they're, they're using that nature context in a way that helps them find the real relevance of this subject matter to their own lives. And so, so grades go up and standardized test scores and reading and math go up, um, you know, those sorts of things. Um, so healthier, happier, smarter is just the quick way of saying there's a bounty of research um, in all of these areas. It's not all um, the most rigorous research yet, although we're making great strides in being able to make some causal claims that yes, nature does cause this. Um, and we're just diving into why, what are the mechanisms, you know, why would grades go up, you know, that sort of thing. So, so lots more to research, but you know, a lot of research is, is pointing in positive directions in all three of those areas. Yeah. I'm glad you um, brought up the research. Um, you know, I, I do hope that some of this will kind of incentivize or spur um, nurse researchers to take up this uh, subject um, because I think it does lend itself to um, nursing in a scholarly fashion and, and other um, avenues to promote this, this connection. Yeah. I think the healthcare profession is an incredibly important ally in this um, for a number of reasons. Um, one, they are relatively new to this in terms of being a sector that is jumping on board. And um, maybe the, I mean, it's a little bit of a no brainer, but in a way, it's still kind of the unexpected messenger. You know, when the doctors start jumping on board, it's like, Oh, here's somebody with credibility who hasn't talked about this yet. Um, this um, this message carries weight, and so utilizing that sort of positional power um, to advocate um, 
whether it be with the American Academy of Pediatrics or you know the um, the Nursing Association, um, you know, really using your voice as a professional with expertise in what makes for happy, healthier, and smarter kids. Um, this can really go a long way towards moving policy in the right direction getting practice uptake, you know, that sort of thing. So essentially being an advocate, being an ambassador and utilizing, you know, sort of the position that you have as, as experts and credible people um, in our society to push this, this message. Um, that also is important to do with families directly. So utilizing things like well child visits or you know other sorts of contact with families to educate about the benefits of nature in all the w various ways we've talked about and um, being being specific about ways that nature can improve the health and development of the family members and this this kind of gets at that idea that um, you could actually prescribe nature um, you know pull out an old-fashioned paper and pencil, you know, prescription pad and send the family off with a prescription that helps them understand where they could go, what, how long and how often uh, they might do this and what they might do while they're in nature um, so that they can best address the issues that they're having. Um, so for example, if you really want to help family members um, increase their physical fitness, maybe work on uh, weight management or you know, hypertension issues, you, know, you might prescribe um, a certain frequency, a certain amount of time, um, and a certain intensity of exercise in a particular natural environment. If it's managing anxiety symptoms, you might prescribe a different um, sort of setting and a different kind of activity that's more relaxing and restorative. So really utilizing your ability to guide and to prescribe um, to um, make families aware of the potential for nature to you know, improve their, their family members' functioning. Um, and then I think also, you know, being aware of what the natural resources are in the surrounding areas um, that uh, your families and, and patients and people that you're connected with are functioning in so that you can be a resource for helping people understand what the um, park system has to offer or where green schoolyards might be so that you can, you know, really advise in a in a very specific way um, how families can take advantage of all the amazing natural resources that we have. Another thing that I think um, healthcare professionals can do is to advocate for changes in healthcare environments. Um, so how can everything from the hospital room to the doctor's office to the waiting room um, to you know spaces out in our communities be designed in ways that are going to promote that nature connection. Um, there's really interesting research about the views from a hospital room shortening um, hospital stays and decreasing pain and improving you know, recovery, views out of classroom windows, improving children's attention and their, um, you know, their, their wellness while in school, um, indoor nature, you know, bringing plants and, and animals you know, indoors. Um, so we can, we can do a lot around design of indoor and outdoor spaces. And again, you know, physicians and um, nurses and health, other healthcare professionals can advocate for these sorts of changes to create health promoting you know, environments in our built in our natural environments. Well, thank you so much. That that was just you know exactly what I had hoped to highlight, and so I really appreciate your your help and your expertise. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm really glad that you're an ally. That your sector is an ally in the children and nature movement.